What are you looking at? What would you do in this situation? First thing I would do is bring my hands up for protection and try to de-escalate the situation. Obviously that's not going to work, so you bring your hands up, you go to your cover, your clinch and control series. Obviously a nice throw here to get rid of the, uh, get rid of that aggression, but uh, yes, important to just bring your hands up, then that doesn't work, go to your cover, clinch, control. Let me break it down for you. Guys, this is coming out of the blue. He gives me a shove. I'm like, what the flip? Hold on. The hands up now is no longer for distance. The hands up is for protection and potentially diffusing the situation. That's where I'm at. And then getting closer to the uh, cover portion of the cover clinch and control so from here from the hey I don't want no problems to all of a sudden I feel that now I crash with the cover I get into the clinch and now I go back to the last video which is exactly the same is now which way do I go he's leaning a little bit forward I do the tight rope I do the throw and hopefully I've eliminated the assault the hands up could actually be done before the first shove. So when I'm like here, up here, so you can see whether he's gonna throw the left or the right, I have both hands up. This scenario is that much more better than when he's further away because now the distance is that much more close. All I have to do is a small step forward and now I'm ear to chest. His punches no longer have power. I got the control, I get the throw, and hopefully diffuse. Another thing to keep in mind is when I control this striking hand when I'm off to the side is I want to grab this tricep and hug it. I want you to recoil and slap me in the face, please. Right. So I'm controlling this arm and I'm controlling the body and being this to the side is where I'm the least likely to get hurt. Remember, if you're going to be in a fight, you're going to get hit, you're going to get hurt. What I'm teaching is how to minimize all that. What's not talked about in self-defense enough is what's going through internally when you're getting assaulted, when you're getting attacked. This is coming out of nowhere. You're going from zero to a hundred. You don't know how you're going to deal with the emotions. It's very stressful. The last thing you need is to find out, does my left foot go here? Does my right foot go there? Do I turn the wrist? No, you want to use gross motor movements. You just cover, crash into them. You cover, you get that clinch, and then you control them to the side. By that time, 10, 15 seconds has been established. You can rearrange your bearings and then know which way he goes. Does he go forward? Does he go back? But at the end of the day, you use gross motor movements to eliminate as much variables as possible and deal with the assault that way to me that's your higher chance of success rate in a self-defense situation there you have it folks you may recognize that this video resembles the previous video that's a good thing because you don't want to have 16 different game plans for many different scenarios. I know this game plan will not work for a lot of scenarios, but it will work for a lot of them. So it's the cover, clinch, control will work when they're far away, when they're in close or even doing you a favor. Just a matter of crashing in, taking care of business on the inside, avoiding the shots. Um, as always, get a partner, practice both sides, and I look forward to seeing you on the mat soon.